here on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. Uh, Dr. James Hansen is the former top climate scientist at NASA. From 1981 to 2013, he was the head of the NASA Goddard Institute for Space Studies, now the director of climate science awareness and solutions at Columbia University's Earth Institute. He traveled to Minnesota to testify at the trial for the Valve Turners, but the judge ruled she would not allow expert witnesses like Dr. Hansen and 350.org founder Bill McKibben to raise this issue, to testify at all or raise this issue uh, about climate change and uh, the connection to what the valve turners were doing. Dr. Hansen, why did you go to Minnesota, uh, agree to testify in this case? Why did the valve turners you want to defend? Well, of course, they're trying to draw attention to the climate issue and particularly to the egregious role of, uh, of the tar sands. Um, and I just was supposed to ex help explain the climate uh, consequences of, um, of this carbon source. And talk about the consequences. Because ultimately, of course, as the valve turners have said, um, this is why they've done what they've done. It's this connection to climate change. Yeah, well, you know, the difficulty is the delayed response of the climate system and the fact that it includes amplifying feedback. So the public doesn't see that much going on. The public does uh, realize that climate is beginning to change, but it doesn't have a good picture of the ultimate consequences of that because they will be much greater in the lifetimes of our children and grandchildren. and. We need to begin to move on a, a path of decreasing emissions very rapidly if we're going to uh, preserve uh, the same planet that we've enjoyed for our uh, children and grandchildren. And that just has not been clear enough, I think, in, in the prior, um, uh, in the public's mind. You know, it's interesting that this trial came just as the United Nations climate scientists warned in a landmark report that humanity has only a dozen years to mitigate climate change or face global catastrophe. If you, Dr. Hansen, can talk about the significance of this report and, at the same time, this massive monster hurricane. Hurricane Michael, bearing down on the Florida panhandle. It's believed to be the worst um, uh, the Flor Florida has seen in something like a century in this area, about to make landfall. Yeah, well, I think this report is really um, a, a good report from IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. The prior reports do not always uh, convey the urgency of the issue and, and really um, uh, make it very clear to the public. But this one, uh, I think, did a very good job, it, both uh, in warning about the consequences if we don't do something and in making clear that we still can do something, but we have to begin uh, very quickly to actually phase down emissions while, in fact, emissions will continue to climb if we don't uh, have some significant policy changes. I don't uh, know if you're getting you know, a chance to see the climate coverage um, of the hurricane. Um, the meteorolo meteorologists, reporters uh, down in the panhandle um, warning, you know, people must leave, evacuate, and, of course, the politicians as well. But there is almost no mention of climate change. Can you talk about that connection, uh, the intensification yeah. of these hurricanes? Yeah, well, sure. If you look at the temperatures of the ocean uh, in the Gulf and off the east coast of the United States, they're way above normal. And of course, every, as everyone knows, and I think even the public understands, if the ocean is warmer, that provides the fuel for these uh, tropical storms. Um, and that's exactly what we're seeing. That storm is intensifying because the, the water is unusually warm. And so we're getting a very strong storm out of what would have been a weaker storm without that additional push from the extraordinarily warm ocean. 
Hmm. And the tsunami, the earthquake and tsunami that we saw in Indonesia, in the island of Sulawesi, this horror, where it looks like 5,000 people are missing, 1,700 confirmed dead. Is there any link there, um, if not the earthquake, the power of the tsunami? Well, uh, there's a link in terms of the impact of the tsunami. There are recent papers on this that show that sea level is rising, and when you add the human-caused increase in sea level to the uh, tsunami, it makes it uh, more damaging. That has been actually uh, apparent on the recent uh, hurricanes hitting the United States. The sea level, global average sea level, has gone up uh, 20 centimeters because of greenhouse warming, which is uh, about eight inches. But along the coast, uh, eastern coast of the United States, it's about twice as much. And when you add that uh, sea level rise to the storm surges, it makes them that much worse. And of course, the warming also increases the amount of water vapor in the atmosphere, increases the rainfall totals. And so uh, the uh, global warming effect has been making hurricane effects significantly larger. There's also uh, a recent paper by James uh, Cossin, which argues that the speed, the translation speed of these storms in many cases has been slowed down. And that, in the case of the Houston and the Carolinas uh, hurricanes, they moved slowly, and so the rainfall totals were exceptionally large. And this is attributable, the slowing of the speed in, in general can be related uh, to the global warming. Emily Johnston, uh, you co-founded 350.org in Seattle, Washington. Um, as we wrap up, uh, your thoughts on what your plans are now that you are acquitted? Uh, well, in the immediate sense, you know, we are engaged in uh, many climate campaigns in Seattle and in Washington state. Uh, there's plenty of work to be done. I'm looking forward to getting back to it. The great majority of that work is legal, um, but we do engage in some civil disobedience actions. Uh, and, you know, we really, with this trial, we particularly wanted uh, to do the necessity defense. This would have been sort of the dream trial in terms of our expert witnesses uh, and our ability to present that defense. The fact that we couldn't do that is is pretty heartbreaking. Um, and so I know a lot of people are still thinking about. We're going to have to end we, it. Uh, We're going to have to end it there, but we'll do part two and post online sure. at democracynow.org and at Klopstein and Emily Johnston, Kelsey Skaggs, and Dr. James Hansen. Thanks so much. I'll be speaking in Florida next weekend, as well as Washington tomorrow night. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks for joining us.